Hello, smarty adults. I want to tell you about a new podcast that might keep you up all night. If you're a fan of ghosts, ghouls, and mysterious monsters, you're going to love Monster Talk, the science show about monsters. This podcast, for adults only, uses science and skepticism to explore the fascinating realm of cryptozoology, ghosts, and goblins. Since 2009, host Blake Smith and Karen Stalzenow, along with expert guests, have been shedding light on these enigmatic creatures and sharing their stories. Now, Monster Talk isn't about proving if monsters exist, but rather about understanding what these tales say about our world. With episodes ranging from 30 to 40 minutes, Monster Talk is an ideal listen for adults who are intrigued and captivated by the paranormal and supernatural. But again, due to adult language, this podcast may not be suitable for the kiddos. Parental discretion is strongly advised. Monster Talk is available on iTunes, Spotify, or the podcast platform of your choice. A podcast that brings a fresh perspective to the distant past. Join host Jen McMenemy and Jenny Williamson as they delve into fascinating topics like the use of war elephants in ancient battles, the enigmatic role of mythology in shaping ancient cultures, and the mysteries surrounding ancient natural disasters. And recent episodes like Berserkers on the Battlefield and Catholic Werewolves showcase the podcast's clever knack for blending educational content with fantastical stories. Now, I must warn you, Ancient History Fangirl is geared towards adults and, as such, contains subject matter that may not be suitable for younger smarty pants. So please, listen at your own discretion. But if you're looking for a lively and enlightening exploration of the ancient world, tune in to Ancient History Fangirl wherever you listen to podcasts. A free study guide containing additional information and activities is available for each Who Smarted episode. Join more than 10,000 teachers and parents who've already signed up for our Who Smarted email newsletters with everything you need to help make your kids smarter at whosmarted.com. Psst. Hey, you. Yeah, you. What's up? Yeah, I know. The sky is up. Ha ha, never heard that one before. Think you're pretty smart, huh? All right, smarty pants. I got something for you that's going to blow your mind. I'm serious. Think you can handle having a blown mind? Mm, I don't know. This might be too much fun for you. Never mind. I was never here. What's that? You want me to tell you what it is? Fine. Here it is. How would you like to learn how to make something levitate? That's right, I said it. Levitate. As in, float in the air, like a, like a thing that floats in the air. Like bubbles. Yeah, yeah, like bubbles. Everyone likes bubbles. Okay, so you're in. Nice. All I need you to do is grab something nearby. Something that can't break or spill, just in case you're not very good at levitating. Why don't you grab a pencil, or a pillow, or a stuffed animal? Go ahead. I'll wait. Got it? Good. Now, hold it out in front of you. Make sure there's nothing underneath it. I don't know you, kid. You look like a good listener, but I've been fooled before. And neither one of us wants to get yelled at for breaking stuff. All right, ready? We're going to make whatever you have in your hand levitate. And all you got to do is focus on that object and think about things that are light. Things that float, like clouds or feathers or bubbles. Now the only way this doesn't work is if you're breaking the law. But you're a law-abiding citizen, right? You look like a law-abiding citizen, but I've been fooled before. Okay, hold out your object and picture it hovering in midair. Focus. Now when I say so, wait a minute. I want you to let go. But only when I say so. I can't wait. Ready? Ooh. On the count of 17. Here we go. One. Two. Just kidding. On the count of three. When I say three, you let go. Ready? One. Two. Three days ago, I ate some cheese and... Cheese! Oh, wait. Did you let go? Okay, what happened? Did it levitate? 
No, it's on the floor. Did you do what I told you? Did you think about floating stuffed animals and bubbles? Oh boy, I know what happened. Remember what I said? I said the only way this doesn't work is if you break the law. Guess what, my friend? You just tried to break the law. That's right, the law of gravity. Don't you know the law of gravity? What goes up must come down? Uh Uh-huh. Well, don't worry. In fact, you just proved one of the most important laws of the universe. But there's a lot more to learn about gravity. So buckle up. Time for another whiff of science on... Who smarted? Who smarted? Who smart? Is it you? Is it me? Is it science? Or history? Listen up! Everyone, we make smarting lots of fun on Who Smarted? Okay. You might be one of those smarty pants that knew what was going to happen. And you can't just make objects float. Except bubbles. But here's the thing. Whether you knew what was coming or not, wouldn't it be awesome if you could make things levitate or fly? Whoa, check it out. Floating toast. Awesome. Ah! Help, my car just flew into space. What's going on? Why is everything floating away? There goes my school. And my house! And my mom? Do your homework! Yeah, maybe not that awesome. But thankfully, that's not the case. Oh man, my toast landed butter side down. Bummer, dude. Awesome or not awesomeness aside, why isn't everything just floating around? Because of, you guessed it, gravity. Gravity is the hidden force that keeps everything anchored down. And when I say everything, I mean everything. You, me, ninjas, elephants, monster trucks, Mount Everest, and the Pacific Ocean are all stuck in place on the Earth because of gravity. But what is gravity? Is gravity a magnet? Nope. It would be pretty hard to walk if you were stuck to the Earth by a magnet. Is it sticky like glue or tape? Nope. Thank goodness, because that would hurt your feet. So what is gravity? Psst. Ever hear of a guy named Sir Isaac Newton? No. Does this ring a bell? What a lovely day. I think I'll take a nap under this apple tree. Ow! That apple fell on my head. Hmm. Why would the apple fall on my head and not float upward? It's as if there's an invisible force pulling this apple and everything else, including me, downward towards the Earth. Fascinating. I wonder if there's a name for this. Yeah, man, you're going to eat that apple? Okay, so maybe it didn't happen exactly like that. But the point is, that's what gravity is. An invisible force that pulls one object towards another. And the bigger the object, the stronger the pull. And what's the biggest object around you right now? Is it your couch or your bed? Hmm. Is it your house? Or maybe you're in a building. Hmm. Is it your city or your country? Uh. Nope, it's the Earth. Uh. The Earth is the biggest object around you, so everything is being pulled towards it. You're stuck to your chair, which is stuck to your floor, which is stuck to your house, which is stuck to the Earth. But is the Earth the biggest object in the universe? Not by a long shot, my friend. Which is why the Earth is being pulled around the Sun, which is 109 times bigger than the Earth. Yep, all because of gravity. Told you this was going to blow your mind, smarty pants. Also, what are smarty pants? Do you wear them? Can you wash them? Stay tuned, because we have a lot more to learn on Who Smarted? Breaking news! Across the globe, sounds are mysteriously going missing. Waves aren't crashing, crickets aren't chirping, and the familiar jingle of the ice cream truck is a distant memory. Follow Detective Hunch and his new sidekick, Audie the Ear, as they solve sound mysteries and track down the nefarious sound swindler. All with a little help from me, LeVar Burton. Listen to Sound Detectives wherever you get your podcasts. 
Sound Detectives is sponsored by Half Price Books. Join Hoda Kotb for a brand new season of her podcast, Making Space. I feel this season is more personal to me. Uplifting conversations with television host Maria Menounos, the Office star and author Rain Wilson, and more. All of our guests provide something special. Every single one. Come with me on this journey, and I promise you'll leave stronger than when you started. New episodes of Making Space with Hoda Kotb are released every Wednesday. Listen now wherever you get your podcasts. Okay, so we know gravity is an invisible force that attracts a body to the Earth, which is why things don't go flying off into space, and why if you drop something, it falls to the ground. It's also why the Earth, along with all the other planets, orbit around the Sun, and why the Moon orbits around the Earth. Simply put, gravity is affected by two things: the amount of matter in an object, which we call the mass, and the distance. Between the two objects, the greater the mass of two objects, and the closer they are, the more gravitational force there will be between them. Now, when it comes to mass, you might be thinking we're talking about weight, but it turns out mass and weight aren't the same. To help explain, I brought in my personal trainer, Dino. Yo, listen up, kids. I want all you to drop right now and give me fifty. Sit downs. What? Yeah, we're not doing sit ups or push ups right now. Now it's time to sit back, listen, and learn because nobody knows more about lifting weights and adding muscle mass than me, Tina. Okay, but are mass and weight the same thing? Absolutely not. Now I know what you're thinking. If something weighs a lot, it probably has a lot of mass. And if something has a lot of mass, it's probably pretty heavy. While that's true, it's not always the case. So, could something have mass but no weight? Hmm, pretty tricky, right? Let me do a few quick concentration curls while you think about it. Okay, you got your answer. Did you say absolutely? Absolutely correct. But how could that be? How can something have mass but no weight? Well, think about how you weigh yourself. What do you do? You step on a scale, right? Yeah. Well, what exactly is the scale measuring? Weight. Yeah, yeah, I know. It's measuring how much you weigh. But what is weight? Weight is the force of the ground pushing up against the gravity that is pulling you down. That's your weight. Now, obviously, your body contains mass, which is also why gravity is always pulling you down. But is there any way you can think of to continue having mass while having no weight at all? Oh, I'm gonna do a few bench presses while you think about it. Okay, have you thought about it? How could your body still have mass while having no weight at all? All right, there's a simple way you can do this. Ready? One, two, three. Jump. That's right. While you're jumping up in the air, you're technically weightless, but you still have mass, which is why you come crashing back down to Earth. And if you can't jump or you don't like to jump, just imagine being up in space. You'd be floating weightless, but the mass of your body would go into orbit around the closest large body, like the Moon or the Earth or the Sun. Okay, okay, that's enough of a mental workout for today. Now, if you excuse me, I gotta teach a gravity Pilates class. Yo, yo, let's work out that core. Pretend you're in space. Well, that's all the time we got for today. There's still a lot more to talk about when it comes to gravity, so we'll have to meet up again soon. Luckily, thanks to gravity, I know you'll be sticking around. Who put that apple tree there? Thanks for listening to Who Smarted. Today's episode: Gravity. Was written by Jerry Colbert and Adam Tex Davis, and voiced by Adam Tex Davis, Kim Davis, and Gia Davis. Technical direction and sound design by Josh Hahn. Who smarted was recorded and mixed at the Relic Room Studio. Theme song by Brian Suarez. Lyrics written and performed by Adam Tex Davis. Who smarted was created and produced by Adam Tex Davis and Jerry Colbert. New episodes of Who Smarted every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And free curriculum and activities available on whosmarted.com. This has been an Atomic Entertainment production. Who's smarted?